Just share with your peers. I don't oh. care. And well, take the whole thing. The and just share with your peers. All right. So last <laughs> night I was I was tutoring. Uh, student, uh, no, not well. If I turn on the TV, you don't really need to work. Wonderful. Last night I was tutoring a student, and I decided to go ahead and just dimension out or write on my tiles. So please don't write on your tiles. But remember, we have X tiles, we have XY tiles, we have Y tiles, and we have X tiles, and we have one squares. Right? And everything can be negative if we flip it over. So, our first problem that we're going to approach here today, just playing with the tiles. And however you decide to approach it is up to you. Uh, depends on how far we get. If we make it that far, it'll be 415, the problems from there. But I mean, it's just three for you. So we'll formalize that in a, in a minute if we need to. Now, when we look at A, is there anything from yesterday's lesson that would help us factor A in an easier manner? And essentially, I'm trying to be lazy. I don't really want to pull out um, 20. I don't want to pull out 40 tiles. I can factor out and say this is really a manipulation of saying we have five of what? So try to create that, what's in the parentheses, using your tiles to make a perfect rectangle. Your unit squares will be flipped to red to represent the negative. Are we on 4, 1, 4, 37A. Oh, no, we're just playing with tiles right now. Do we have any homework tonight? I literally just answered that. It will depend on how far we make it today. Well, I already if finished the next homework. I, I do not think that we will get done with 415. We'll probably start it. So we use 1x squared. Use 3x's. i got to dump a lot of these out. Try to, hey, by the way, try to keep your tiles separate from your neighbors. There is a specific amount in the bags. So we'd like to try to keep it that way. Where's the tiles over here? Not right there. The box right there. If it was a snake, it would have been. Why? I didn't do anything to it. Because it was close. It's just an expression of speech. I figured that I would get it, so... Mm -hmm. What did we say yesterday about when we're working with X squared tiles and X tiles? We should put the X tiles along the X squared tiles because we can't count it. Now, if I do this... How much room do I have for individual tiles? Only one. Hmm. Crap. So if I do that, okay, so. So I do this. Hmm. Hmm. Play with it for a minute. Didn't say it was. Didn't say it was. Just go up. So wait. So we can't. We can't build it just like this. What if now in my screen area, I bring in another X. Then we can do it. Both of them. But I can't. Right. I can't just do this. Because now I've changed what I have. But I've changed the value of this expression. How do I keep the value of this expression the same, but bring in more tiles to work with? So you take the same tiles, but you flip one over and make zero pairs. We can always modify an expression with zero pairs. So this is what we want, right? What we have shown. If I put in that, is it still what I want? Yeah. Yes. So this positive x and this negative x cancel out and allow me to use more x tiles. Okay. 
express what we just did. What is what is this dimension? X minus 1 this dimension? And we know that this actually uses five sets of that. Whoa. Try D, what? Yeah. Can this be X plus three plus one being conservative? No, because we, so when we lay out the dimensions, we're saying what physical dimension oh, we have. Okay. The value of our X's, when we look at it all together, is three X combined. But the dimensions involve x minus 1, this has nothing to do with the x axis, it's just minus 1, all of this being minus 1 because that dimension is minus 1, and then this is x plus 4, all of these plus 4, because if this <coughs> is negative 1 times 1, the area of that square is negative 1. If this is negative 1 times 1, and that's how we get the negative 4. Okay. Yes. Oh. We don't have any Yeah, I don't think that's possible. Um, do you it's not possible. Just, 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 no, it was Chris. Oh my God. It was Chris. So you are correct. We do not have X cubed tiles, but but what we do have is constant tiles that apparently aren't going to be used. We yesterday discussed the fact that before we start these. We're wanting to factor anything common out to make life easier. Three factor out three x. So. so not only do they all involve an x, but they all involve three x. So before we start with b, we're going to factor out three x, which will leave us with I I don't know. You saw it right? It's, yeah. I don't know. X squared. Minus Thank you. Two X minus just fifteen. Right? Because it's giving a teal I forget what the difference is in the umlauts and weird things. Umlauts are in German. Alright, so try that one. You are just trying to model what's in the parentheses. Now remember, you can use more tiles than what you're allowed, but you have to net what you're supposed to use. Now remember, we have five tiles. The individual tiles, there are connected five tiles. Do not break them, please. Can you actually break them? I sure hope not, but I bet you could. No, let's not. Let's let's not and say that we didn't because we're good kids. Let's not and say that we didn't. Have you ever heard the expression "let's not and say we did"? Like, hey, that's a bad idea. Let's just not do it, and maybe you can just say we did. Okay. No, just keep away from like our goals. So I don't know. If I throw some X's here. That doesn't really work. Wait, wait, wait. Should I put three up? If I imagine, because I'm lazy and I don't want to use the individual tiles, if I imagine, all right, I'm going to do this, right? That's really ugly. Bless you. And doesn't even close to make a rectangle. Wait, 
You what? Oh, I get how you do it. What did you bring in? Well, quantify. Yeah, three sets of zero pairs. I love how you just said that. Thank you very much. So, if I bring in three sets of zero pairs, three positive, three negative. Now, I could put, I could swap around where these are, but it's nicer to do like this. Why is it nicer to build it like this? Sorry, right, it's also really dark on my screen because one of my bulbs in my lamp burned out, I realized. I need to get a new one to see things. What is my height now? X plus three. What is going on with this? Okay, I don't know why that part of the board doesn't want to work. X plus three, what's my width? X minus five. X minus five. Now your one should actually flip the other way. But what if I try C? What do you know when you have no middle term? That it's zero as well. Well, yeah, the middle term zero. Now I'm hoping that we will start to discover what that really tells me. Again, is there anything to be done before we start to make life easier? Yeah, I have two. So now, now still, I'm gonna have a constant of negative twenty-five. That's kind of gross. Well, five, it factors out to five and five. Yeah. So this is rather inconvenient. Add in some more tiles. Like what? <laughs> like I don't know. Like no. five pairs like of X's. X's. I don't know. Sure. Five pairs <laughs> of zeros. Might as well. We're just gonna use all of the tiles apparently. <laughs> now I'm trying to be like facetiously um like annoyed by this. But guys you should be realizing this is helping you visually model and make sense of what the heck we're doing. I'll wager a piece of candy on what you can actually tell when you have. <clears throat> Wait, does the Y tile, like, does the Y two thing equal five? No, they don't. No, this is annoying. Cannot be counted, right? You cannot quantify x and y. What sort of shape did I get? A rectangle. More specifically, a square. This is another one of those where I don't know if I'm completely supposed to tell you this yet or not. When you don't have a middle term, like x squared minus 25, this, can I have your attention for just a moment, is called a difference of squares. Because unlike, you know, it's cute, you keep like, it's like I had you for like three seconds. Unlike if all of this was positive, to make a nice positive square all filled in, we could then say, okay, it's x plus 5 squared. But we can't, right? Because my dimensions aren't the same. So here, what we have is x plus 5 for one of our dimensions and x minus 5 for the other. My outer and my inner, when this situation happens, will always be additive inverses. Hence, a difference of squares deletes your middle term. And that's why we call it a difference of squares as opposed to a perfect square trinomial. Perfect square trinomial, same dimensions both way, makes a square, you have all three terms. Difference of squares deletes that middle term, but you could still model it with a square. Okay? Are we going to do the last one? Mm, yes. Yay! What? Oh, it just like detached. Yeah, it just like, that's not real. Wait, no. That's, that's awkward. Wait, no. I mean, we should probably just like glue this back together or something. Um, will you give me your bag and this? I'll keep this on my desk, but 
the end of class, even the beginning of the end of class. So I can put this, I'll glue it, and then I'll put it back in that bag. Try D. <laughs> you can always factor by anything common. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't want to capture. Why are you being such a pain in the butt today? Pain in the butt. Pain in the butt. No, pain in the angle side of the mouth. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Jenny, you're welcome to my class any day. Yes. So we factor out a Y. We then need to actually try to factor that. So that and these and this, right? Yeah. There we go. Y, no, wait, yeah, no, x squared, what, this is weird now, x squared minus 3x minus 10, got it, right, what do I do with these? Just like, yeah. I like how yours is just so weird. So, if anyone's struggling with this, one of the first things that I know is if part of my dimension is negative, then if this were positive, there'd have to be another negative part of my dimension. So for my constants to be negative, there's going to have to be a positive up here. I see I'm missing from this corner and missing from this corner how much? Yeah two sets of zero pair x's, right? So, if I positive there, negative there, I'm still representing the same thing. And now my factored dimensions are, what's the height? X plus two, x minus five. Thank you very much. Questions remaining with So you're going to get them all locked in your desk. Now, I need these. That's research. I'm taking them on my personal memory. Now I can know if it's okay. If you guys want to take a bag of tiles home, that is fine. I need to keep a list of who's taking them home. So at the end of class, I'll stop a couple minutes early. If you want to borrow tiles, I'll be like, here's my tiles. Please make sure you don't lose them. There is a specific number in the bags to do the problems in the book. Like, this bag can do any problem that we need to do in the book. If we start to lose tiles, it won't. So, please be careful with them. Closed sets, open sets. A little bit of learning. Do we still need an algebra tile? Yeah, when we go to 415, we probably will. Anyone know, and if you don't, we'll be able to read it. You don't know the difference between a closed set and an open set? I just did the homework today, so. Jenny. Um, Essentially, exactly what Jenny said. Closed set means what I put in is the same type as what I get out. So if it's a closed set of integers, I use integers with whatever I'm doing, I get integers out. If it's a closed set of whole numbers, I use whole numbers, put them in, get whole numbers out. So when we look at whole number addition, any two whole numbers will add. Does it get a whole number? That's a closed set. If we can break the rule, it's open. It is not a closed set. So, think about integers then. If I add two integers, do I get an integer? Yeah. What, okay, so back on whole numbers, what about subtraction? No, right? Because if I have two 
whole numbers, 2 and 5, and I do 2 minus 5, that's not a whole number. That means it's not quite an important cell. So it's an open cell. So think about integers under subtraction or multiplication or division. Just play with this for a minute. And justify it. I'm essentially combining all of the ABC. So we're think about all think integers, right? Whole numbers are a bit more specific. With integers, think about addition. Is it closed? Subtraction. Is it closed? Then, because those two are very related, multiplication. Is it closed? Division. Is it closed? Okay, probably you know three-ish minutes to kind of ponder this over, and we'll talk about it. I will tell you they are not all closed. Really, we more just say it's not closed because closed has, is like definable. Oh, and then we just say like it's not or in like or un. Like, instead of saying like, like there is no word necessarily for not parallel. Right? We know perpendicular, but if two lines are not parallel, well, there is one. It, well, well, skew, right? But, but we could also just say these are these lines are unparallel. They're not parallel. So with closed, we say it's not closed. We, I think you can say open. I don't want you to quote me on that until we double check on it. I think we're allowed to use open set, but here they say it is not a closed set. What we're allowed to do is open. I'm going to do a tiny bit of checking on this. I've never taught open and closed set before. Open and all basically. Pretty handy. Um, yeah. If you're ever looking at those film techniques, you can just kind of lay down. So, integers. Well, first off, we should probably define integers. What's an integer? That's, That's not, not close. <laughs> Owen? So it's all positive and negative numbers that like, do not have, like, I don't have a word. Oh, I never taught this to you then, did I? No, I, we weren't, I learned it in four. I don't know if it's exactly the same. It's all positive. All right, something's yeah. wrong with my smart board today. Numbers, but, like, they don't have a fraction. Hey, it's an open set of numbers. No, green doesn't work. Ah, so, it, so positive or negative whole numbers. Here's how I want you to remember integers, and apparently oh, my pen's not going to work. Hold on. Integers stand for entire value. Whether it's positive or negative, integer, entire value. No partials. No decimals, no fractions. Whole is can I order that many whole pizzas? So this always throws people off. Is zero a whole number? Yes. We can order that many whole pizzas. Is zero an integer? Does it have any partials? No, so it's an integer. Integer just means entire value. So pick two integers and add them. Do you get an integer? Yes, we already said that. What about two integers and subtract? Whole numbers would work. Yes, I'm just trying to give you like that verbal recognition of integer entire value. Why is division not closed? So, what set then, or what like set of numbers would be closed under division? Wait, a number, what are those numbers called? Rational. You just say here? Yeah. Rational, right? Rational numbers are any numbers that can be written as a fraction. If I have a fraction value, and I divide by a fraction value, will I get a value that can be represented by a fraction? Well, yes, because we know that division by a fraction is really like multiplication of its inverse, and a fraction times fraction will always yield a fraction. Improper proper doesn't matter. So rational values, we could say, are closed in all circumstances as subtract, multiply, divide. Then we could start to deal with powers. And roots. Okay. And
and discuss whether those sets are closed or open. Just spruce? All right. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. Let's move on to four and five. We are going to look at some special cases. Now that we've gotten better at those tiles, I think we'll be able to visualize some of these things without even using the tiles, but now that we've worked with them. So what sort of special case did we just talk about A being called? Uh, a uh, square. A what? Not a perfect square. A perfect square triangle will have a middle term. Difference of squares. So, check this out. Difference of squares. Give me your eyes. This will, this will like mind blow make your life easier. A perfect square trinomial, similar to the x squared minus 49. <laughs> What do you notice about that? What do 49 and 14 relate? 7, right? When I see that the middle term doesn't exist, it's 0, I know the x values had to cancel out. I also know, based on how the multiplication works, that when I multiply those two numbers, like we did with the diamonds, we get a product here that would need to be 49. So essentially, we're just doing a square root. But we know we have to have a positive and a negative option. So this here, because there's no middle term, instead of being, because this would actually be x plus 7 squared, or x plus 7 times x plus 7, the only difference down here is it's x plus 7 times x minus 7. X minus 7 play with the other ones. I want to know which ones seem difficult to factor. So pull out a piece of paper. We're actually going to try to like write these down and check them. And you can keep your tiles out if you need to use them. I think that's perfectly fine. I mean, really, go through and see, can you factor it? Can you, like, right off the bat, see how to factor it? If not, like, for B, this is what I would have, and that doesn't seem nice. So I would probably try to reevaluate B in some way. My visual for B, right? Yeah. How many X's am I missing? Eight, right? So, how many zero pairs am I going to bring in? Four. So, we know I'm going to bring in four negatives and four positives. Now, this gets weird. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. So, here, there, I mean, I mean, this is going to be tough to work with now. See. Not just thinking about like terms, but like values. Try to keep your negatives in line with your negatives. Keep your positives in line with your positives. Because now I can actually represent the dimension, whereas before I could not represent the dimensions how I actually had that. Because if these were negative, 
and these are positive, but above them make negative, this breaks multiplication rules. How I have it now, this dimension is negative, making these negative. This can be positive, and a positive times a negative make that negative. So now my dimensions, and I'm saying all of this with it not on camera, so if I just slow that down. All of this is saying now this dimension is what? x minus 4 by x plus 6. There you go. Think about it visually. Even if you don't have the tiles, think it through visually. So try um, the other, like we're just going to play with these for the rest of the period. We've got about 12 minutes. Tell me if you think one's really difficult and we'll do it all together. So play with these on your own for a few minutes. We'll go over anything you have now. Especially try to factor first, but a lot of these I don't think are factorable because they're just special cases. They're not factorable? Not, not factorable before we start. You know, like how we could factor out a 5 or an X or something. Most of these don't have a common factor to the whole thing. Oh, well, isn't it still fact? Yeah, they are factorable, but they're a special case. I'm just looking at random ones. I'm, I'm arranging this just like every way that I can think of. I don't like C. C? Good, thank you. C. Um, X squared. Hard is relative. Easy is relative. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. These all need to be negative. And positive 25. Now, one of the things that we know is that our x squared and our positives are going to be diagonal from each other, right? Kind of when we set up that rectangle model. And this is a 5 by 5, so it doesn't really matter which way I turn that. And I have 10 negative x's. I bet you when we build this, it'll make a lot more sense than what you thought. Do you see where you think things need to go? No. Forget it. Now hold up. What's my height dimension? X minus 5, right? What's my length? And what's a negative 5 times a negative 5? This is what I'm talking about with the whole negative positive kind of like it messes with you a little bit. I don't need to bring in any extra tiles for this situation. This is actually a perfect square I own it. Notice that the B value is two times the square root of the C value. The B value is well negative two times, but it's two times the square root of the C value. This, because there's no middle term, we know is a difference of squares. The dimensions one will have positive one will have negative, as opposed to here, they have to have the same dimensions. B would be a lot to model, a nine x squared. I didn't do it. They should all be factorable. 
you know what I mean? Like, I think there are only nine X players in your team. There's ten? Okay, sweet. Lost Pearl Wax. That would be easy, just start plugging X's in as well. Oh no! Did we not look at this one yesterday? No. That's what we did. D. The 9x squared plus 12x's plus 4 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 plus Perfect square trinomial. What? I didn't know that. D is a perfect square trinomial. Oh, well. It's just 3x as opposed to just an x. So 3x plus 2 squared. If you, you could write out expanded notation with the binomial times the binomial. E, you guys said, is weird because there's 5 of my x squareds, 4 negative x's. Out. And how many constants? One negative. So everything has to add my work space. E. With the five x squared. So. I can't make a rectangle out of these in any way except for just making it super long. Then I know that I need to be diagonal with my constant. Now I have four of these, which great, yay, these will start. Oh. So what do I need to do? What do we call that? I keep saying it. Two words, ZP. Zero pair, positive, negative, make a zero pair. Now, can I go negative here, positive there? That does not work. How I have it right now does not work. I need to go negative up here, positive right here, keeping my terms that are similar with each other. My dimensions now become this is? Well, yeah, 5x plus 1, x minus 1, right? 5x plus 1, x minus 1. These cancel in the area model, but for our rectangle to work, we need them. So guys, I want you to realize something. I went to Mr. Bueller yesterday with a bag of these files. And I was like, look, you're a smart guy, right? And I, I think Mr. Bueller is a very smart guy. You're smarter than me, I guarantee that. And he, I'm like, hey, remember factoring quadratics? He's like, yeah, soil. Like this freaking thought, and I was like, all right, so what if I told you that these tiles can be used to visually show the factorization of a trinomial? And he was like, what? He said, yeah, no, we can show how you factor a trinomial through a visual representation of a rectangle model. And he's like, yeah, I know that's way over me. You guys are learning things. You guys are learning in ways that we've never been able to teach you before because it wasn't realized, it wasn't formalized, and we, like, even if people realize it, they're like, oh, middle schoolers can't learn like that. High schoolers can't learn like that. Just teach them things to memorize. Just give them rules, right? Memorize rules. This is so much more beneficial to your learning. So I hope you're realizing how impactful this actually is to see what we're doing. Biggest trick I would say to utilize, make a rectangle out of your squared values and a um, your constant has to be diagonal to it, so bottom left, top right, and then fill it in from there. We have about two minutes left, so let's go ahead and get the tiles 
clean up if we could, and we'll put those away, and we'll pick up more of this next week. Obviously, the 415 homework is not due on Monday. We will assign that to Monday. Are you sad that the homework's not due? I'm very, very sorry. No, I'm very happy to hear